If you want to know everything there is to know about the native Propel 13, then this video is for you. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, we cover kayak modifications, spin, and fly fishing. So poke that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. In an earlier video, I did a long video comparing the native Propel to the Jackson Cusa. So this video is gonna pull out the Propel part of that with a few references over to the Cusa so you can see the great detailed walkthrough I got from the guys here at Hook, Line and Paddle, one of the best places to buy a kayak within a thousand miles of Wilmington, North Carolina. And if you buy a kayak here and the accessories, they'll install them for free. Now, let's do the walkthrough on the Propel. I'm here with Chris, the kayak whisperer, and his kayak sniffing dog, Finn. And we're here to try and figure out what the best kayak is for me. We're at 102 pounds with the drive system. Drive system out, we're down to 88 less dog. So the native Slayer 13 is, thir is 13 feet. That, that, that thing's 12. 12 feet, so okay. this is gonna be a foot longer which means technically it should be just a hair faster because there's placement holes. So what? the longer the hull, the faster it goes. What about the difference in width? We didn't talk about that over there. Uh, widths are going to be very similar. This guy's coming in at 35, this guy's coming in at 33 and a half. Okay. So, and that width there, because you can stay in the both of them. Um, need to put a little bit more of a tunnel hull underneath it. Um, so they can make the boat just a little skinnier. Uh, Jackson went with a little bit of a flatter hull, for the same, achieving the same purpose, which made the boat just a hair wide. But they're both pretty stable for... Uh, they were both built to stand up. Okay. It wasn't something we figured out. They, they built both models to be something you can stand up in. Okay. Um, so both the Jackson Cusa and the native Slayer 13 paddle extremely well. Um, and when you're in shallow water conditions, if you want to stand up and pull around a sight cast, you're going to need a way to get around other than your, than your foot drive or your propel system front hatch in this kayak um, it's bungee down so if while you're fishing you can go ahead and lift it up when you're you can get out the gear that you need when you're done it will kind of self close itself with the bungee it's also scuppered so if you have if you want water to drain out of here which rarely water gets in um, I would pull the scupper I prefer to not have storage areas in my kayak with the scupper plugs in because if i do get some salt water in it i don't want my gear sitting in that salt water all day i'd rather just have a drain and let, let the gear dry and move on so that's kind of my personal preference um but if you want to leave it plugged you can so that's a feature that the kuza does not have correct correct um very similar again you have track up on both sides that you can add more gear to tracks here in front of the drive system this one comes with a battery box if you want to add a fish finder to it you, know, you can store it inside there and that's something the Jackson didn't have. Correct. Um, we talked about how you just un undo those two thumb screws to pull Jackson's foot drive off for the Propel from Native. You pull back these two clips, grab the handle, and now it's off. For this one, lowering and raising, you need your foot of water when it's down. Right now, just let that, the CUDA, you're gonna need about you know four inches to paddle in. So all we do here, prop straight up and down, lift up, remove the plate, drop in position, put the plate back on, off you go again, forward in reverse. Um, so this needs a foot of water to with it with, you, with, with, it, with it down and with you sitting in it with your gear, you're gonna you're gonna sink it down a little bit in the water. Mm -hmm. 12 to 14 inches, depending on how big you are and how much gear you're carrying. I always kind of opt for a foot and a half. I got nothing to worry about. I, I know I'm good. This thing hooks down with bungee. Um, when I'm on the water for me, I preference just kitty cording it. So if I do the front left corner, I'll just do the back right corner. That's not going anywhere. That's two less things I have to unhook if I have to pop my drive up. Again, personal preference. Um, Is there any danger when you hit an obstruction that the drive unit would be damaged if you hit I, it and you're <clears throat> so not in, not, aware in of it. nine years I've never had one come back damaged from actually running into something. And what holds it down is a small tab here. You push that forward to lock it in position. This is designed to fail. If you run into something, that little tab's designed to break, so the guy kicks up okay. out of the way. So Native does give you a few accessories to their kayak. They give you a three pocket tool holder, again, adjustable hands-free their, on their track system. With their slugs, you slide it back and forth. For it on the other side, you can just remove it, add it over there, hand tighten it down. 
The seat adjustment is very similar to the cruiser we just talked about. You're going to loosen your two thumbs, your two thumb knobs here. It'll slide forward or backwards to get your leg length right. And once you're comfortable, you go ahead and crank her back down. What they've also done here, and it's got a high low. Option. This one doesn't have the high low option. What they wanted to do was make this more of a bicycle motion instead of a recumbent. So the trick is that the plane of your hips are above the plane of your crank. So when you sit in the seat, you get that kind of down driving motion the way the seat's positioned. So you don't have high low. I would say compared to this seat and the CUDA seat, you're probably halfway between high and low. You're kind of in that kind of happy medium. Um, so for the rudder control on this, it's with this handle for your left and right for your steers or on your rudder. Um, on the other side of the kayak, they added a cup holder slash forward facing rod holder. Um, not really designed to hold a rod while you're fishing. But the nice thing I like about this rod holder is if you end up breaking off like you normally do on oyster beds, when you stick the rod in your butt, in, when you stick your rod butt in there, that line's dangling right in front of you. You're able to retie a lure, pull it back out. You're not trying to find a place to stick your rod, try to keep the reel out of the water. It's just a nice spot you can stick it in. That's handy. Yep. Uh, moving, um, same breathable seat design theory. Um, say, uh, all again, aluminum frame like the CUDA. Um, native. It welds their aluminum instead of having it bent. Any kayak from a store like what we do, like is, a, is especially a paddle shop, it's all going to be aluminum and stainless steel. This this boat could end up in Wisconsin. That boat could have ended up in Idaho. They both ended up here on the East Coast, and they're going to be using salt water. So, so which seat is more comfortable for someone with hemorrhoids? Uh, minor hemorrhoids, I would say native, major, uh, the, the CUDA, and... But you know what, if you have one of those fancy little rings, you could probably sit in any one of them. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Um, Native doesn't add that backpack to the back of the seat that Jackson does from Sea Line. Um, they did hand sew one of their own um, backpacks that, that fits the contour of the back. Um, or they also have an optional tackle box storage, tackle box storage system. And this simply just Velcros onto the seat both sides and on the bottom also to keep it stable oh that's pretty handy the, the seat more comfortable for a dog over here well you know he, well i don't really fish what? out of jackson's a lot so he's what? used to being in a native which one has more dog room for the people that like to fish with dogs i would probably say the slayer 13 because the tank well is a little larger we'll see that as we move through this video um, you get your two recess rod tubes in the back like you do with the Jackson. You do have your, you can adjust your um, bungee back here. Uh, the only thing they didn't do, they just you go ahead and use, they went and did, did screws right in their slugs. So you can't keep them a little loose and adjust it while you're on the water. But the friction of it hold it or carry a small screwdriver. And there's a few aftermarket companies like okay. Select Designs out of Everett, Washington. They're making a standard post that you can slide in the track system and again have that little wing nut if you wanted to make it a little bit more adjustable. Um, tank well is definitely larger. So, so, so how much Bass Pro Shop can I put in here? Probably about 84.3 percent. You sure, you sure I can't get any more than that? 84.3? Depends on Not how high you want to stack it. You okay. stack a little bit higher, you might lose a little stability, but you probably get a little bit more. Maybe up to 90? Up probably, but that might be pushing it. Sounds good. So now, you know, if you have a little bit more gear storage back here, um, it is rounded out ready if you wanted to do a five gallon bucket uh, for a bait well. Um, oh, that's pretty cool. So yeah. a little, that's made to, to grip that so it doesn't slip around. around. And again, for myself, I'm going to have my, my scuppers pulled in my tank well because that's where my tackle bag is. And if I get any water over the side, I don't want it sitting in the tank. I don't want, I don't want that bag sitting in the water. With the Slayer 13, it comes in at $24.99. Um, they don't give you as much stuff. You, know, you get the front hatch, you get your tool, you get your tool holder. Yeah, I like this tool um, holder thing. You know, your seat, your drive system, your two recessed tubes in the back come standard with all your bungee. You know, the only thing you're going to add now is you're going to add some kind of rod holder, you know, a few rod holders. Both of them, if you want an anchor trolley, you have to add them to it. That's going to be an additional cost no matter which way you go. Anchor trolley. Maybe you have to add, okay, add the tackle bag, um, which is $79. Uh, with, the, with the Slayer, you're getting just what you need, and then you can kind of build it out. More custom, it's more customizable. Um, 
for you. Um, you might just be happy with two rod holes behind you, and, and this is going to be unnecessary. Uh, you know, so it just depends on, on how you want to fix that. Okay. okay, guys, you've heard, this, this is a long video, but it's really informative. So which of these two do you think I should get? Hell, what's your experience? Do you have an FD? Do you have a Slayer? Which would you check, pick again? And just give me that advice. Thanks.